What brought you to university studies? Well, my parents always had a huge influence uh, on me in respect of putting education very high. Um, I had <coughs> three wonderful years at a local village school with a very good um, teacher, a woman called Miss Morrison. Um, and uh, this was the type of schooling where all the children were brought together. And when I started, there were five of us. There were four girls and Fraser. And Fraser learned to knit uh, just because I was in the uh, minority. Uh, when I left the school, I think there were 28, uh, three years later in 1950. Um, <clears throat> so my parents decided that I should go to a school in Edinburgh. It was called Melville College. And uh, I had the most marvelous education there both through the rest of my primary and uh, secondary education. And I look back on it, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but I think Why that uh, just because my teachers, when I think about it now, could all have been professors at uh, a university. They were very, um, shall we say, erudite um, uh, people with uh, great teaching skills and um, it went far beyond the classroom. They would take us to concerts, they would take us uh, on hikes, they would, you know, it was just absolutely marvelous when I think back on it. So I'm actually going back to not quite this school. It had to merge uh, because it was a little bit small with another bigger school sometime, I think, in the 1970s. And uh, I'm going back to that school on my way back from Stockholm to uh, Chicago. Wonderful. And uh, how come you choose chemistry? Uh, and at what, what stage did you choose chemistry? Well, the, the, the story is the usual one. I had two marvellous chemistry teachers at uh, Melville College, and um, I just got absolutely fascinated by the subject as uh, I saw it then. Um, I was never very um, switched on by smells or bangs. Uh, so it was a process over many years of falling in love with the subject um, and, and <clears throat> I think it was more the wonder of uh, doing something in life that might end up being useful um, and also allowing myself to be creative and I think this is the science where since you make the things that you work with uh, you're also part artist and uh, I think that's without actually maybe consciously realizing that, this is what uh, subconsciously drew me into chemistry more and more. So the story about why I got into research is quite interesting because it plays back to the farm. So I'm in my third year at Edinburgh. It's 1963. An analytical chemist who's running a course has a class of maybe 150 of us, and he makes two comments. He says, um, there's enough cyanide in the lab and we're going to pipette it to kill the whole of Edinburgh. And we all kind of look at each other and uh, feel terrified. And then the next thing he said, he went over the top. He said, I devised this course um, many years ago and um, <clears throat> it's a 10 year course. No, nobody's ever finished it. And uh, well, the short story is I finished it in seven weeks. How? Because I multitasked. I didn't do one experiment after the other in a linear, sequence, I did three experiments at once. And so that brought the uh, opportunity to uh, go into the research lab under the guidance of this person.